Hi, I'm Annie, and I have Saturn in my 11th house. And this is my story. I'll talk a little bit about my father. He was someone who was actually pretty conservative. He was someone who was rooted within the status quo. You know, there was a lot of should. I should be a certain way because this is what is accepted in the society while I was growing up. He was rigid, shall we say, within the status quo and, you know, it's kind of looking good in the society and not, and not deviating from that. He sort of also was someone who was career oriented and he had few friends. He didn't have a lot of people that he knew that he sort of hang out with and was really close and intimate with. He was just more career focused. But he did have this one strange hobby, which was soap carving. And it was kind of strange because he would spend a large part of his weekend soap carving and trying to sell it um, at the weekend markets. And instead of actually trying to spend time with his family, he would sort of do that. I once remembered that I made a friend with one of our neighbors and this friend of mine was from a different country. And she was a she even belonged, you know, she even believed in different religion and sort of had different cultural uh, followed different customs and things. And my dad was kind of a little strange when he found out that I was friends with this girl. He was sort of standoffish and was acting strange around her. And you know, whenever she went home and she was not hanging out at our house anymore, he would just tell me to stop being friends with her because she was, because he sort of believed that if, he just didn't believe that people who were of a sort of different background, you know, could actually get along. He, but I, I sort of felt somehow that he was actually not trusting of her, of people, of anybody who was of different culture, of a different religion. He was very distrustful of that. But one thing that I definitely appreciated him for was that he was quite a fixer kind of a person. He would be able to, he was kind of a tinker, shall we say. He was able to sort of fix, you know, things that were broken in the house. Great at fixing my computer. Um, and he was also someone who had great advice to give about the world and about life. Very insightful advice. The funny thing was, I know that I said that he had some strange hobbies, but I think I kind of got that from him because Ever since I was young, I was always interested in the Ohm salamander. You know, if you're not familiar with it, it's, it's, it's this amphibian that spends all of its life underwater. And it's got undeveloped eyes, but really fascinating sense of smell and hearing. But I was also sort of interested in astrology as well, and I've always wondered if the astrology for animals could be the solution for animals that are endangered. Could using astrology for the birth chart of certain animals map out their behavior patterns in a way that could actually save them from extinction? Anyways, back to my story. Since I was, when I was seven years old, we moved across the country and I had to change schools. And that was not a such a great experience um, because everybody in my class, they'd known each other since kindergarten. And you know, of course I was the new kid, so I didn't really know anybody as well as they'd already known each other. So I felt like a little bit left out and like a little bit of an outcast. I remember that I would sit alone at lunch on this bench 
in the fields rather than in the cafeteria because it was a quiet part of school and um, and I just you know even though if I could join them I felt lonely so why not just just be alone then so that's sort of how it was like back when I was in elementary school. When I was 10, we moved schools again, and of course I was a new kid again, but this time I had promised myself from the first day at school that I was not going to sit on the bench and be alone again. I was going to do something so that I could feel belonging and I could fit in. So, you know, at that point, the Spice Girls were very popular. So I would spend a lot of time listening to the Spice Girls. I would be able to sing their songs and dance to the, you know, the way the Spice Girls danced. Oh, and that was, that really was a great thing to do because everybody loved Spice Girls. And I could bond with a lot of the girls in my class and because we would like Spice Girls. You know, we'd buy a lot of Spice Girls shirts and stationeries and we'd listen to their CDs and then we'd stay over, have sleepovers at each other's houses just to dance and sing to the Spice Girls. And in high school, I would join all the clubs that I could. You know, I was part of the Rotary Club, the Drama Club, the Environmentalist, Environmental Activist Club. And it got to a point where I was even made Student Council President. Um, one year back in high school. I was very popular. All throughout of this I remember I had one friend and her name was Fanny and we were like we were so close. She was my best friend. Throughout um, throughout high school we would do everything together you know we would do all the sleepovers together we would join all the same clubs and she was my so, um, she was the secretary of the student council while I was the president. We were so close. And then I went on to university and I sort of lost touch with Fanny, I suppose, because I didn't know this at the time, but at that time I was still trying really hard to make sure that I would fit in again in university, that I wasn't going to be left out. So I made sure to join a lot of clubs and did a lot of social activities that I just got really busy and sort of lost touch with Fanny. So when I was 22, you know, I had my first job and I decided to become an event planner because I felt that this career could really get me to meet a lot of very interesting people, maybe even celebrities. And, you know, those kinds of connections I felt could really get me to become someone in the world. So during that time, I also had this friend slash colleague, so we kind of worked together and uh, we worked very close. His name was Tom. And, you know, we, we were like a team. We would have a lot of projects together, event planning, but we'd also have our own separate projects as well. Um, but we were working for the same organization. But when I was 20, 28, Tom did something to me that I never could forgive him for. Because we were so close, you know, we were sharing a lot of information about our clients and things. He actually, shall I say, behind my back, When I made connections with a client, my, a potential client of mine, and this client was one of the biggest client I've ever had. It was a big opportunity for me because the client was the owner of um, one of the most famous TV shows in the country, TV programs, sorry, one of the most famous TV channels. He was the owner of one of the most famous TV channels in the country. And, you know, I had worked really hard to land myself in the position of planning um, his next 
charity event that was going to be a really big one. But of course, because I was very close to Tom, we were always talking about our work. But Tom went ahead and offered the client a better deal than the one that I'd made because Tom knew the deal that I was making. So I was really, really hurt by that. I didn't really know who to turn to at that point, but somehow I thought of Fanny. So I decided to get in touch with her and just, you know, hope that we could connect again or something. But Fanny was different. I don't know if she was different or she just didn't didn't want to be friends with me anymore and we just didn't have the connection anymore. So at that point in my life, I had lost, I had really lost the best friend that I've ever had, the greatest the good friend that I've ever had in my life. I've also lost a friend who was being deceitful to me all this time. So it just felt so lonely, lost, felt like I was an ohm salamander in this big ocean. And then it hit me. What if being an ohm salamander can actually help to save the world? What if saving an ohm salamander can actually save the world? Or at least that could be a start. Could at least save a certain species of animal in the world that could help to restore the ecosystem that's been out of balance. And then of course, why hadn't I thought of this earlier? So I decided at 29 years old to go to Europe and join this Om Salamander a protection program while at the same time joining a group of people who were studying astrology so I was doing two of these things together when I moved to Europe. And, and it was a really, really great decision to have done that because I was no longer just trying to fit in anymore. I had completely gone out of that because I tried so hard that I was losing who I am. I was out of touch with that. But this, this was me. This was what I was always interested in since I was younger. This is my vision, my hopes and my dreams in this life. And the moment that I started embracing, you know, this more humanitarian pursuit into my life, I found that I met people who were, you know, both in the astrology program that I was studying and in the organization for the Om Salamander, I had found people that I could really connect with because we were all trying to do the same thing. We were all embracing this strange part of us in order to save the world. And I don't have a lot of friends now. I don't, you know, join superficial, shall I say, social events, but I'm just part of these two things that I feel very passionately about. And I have friends who are real friends to me because there's this brotherhood that we've established, this understanding that we're all, you know, in this together trying to save the world and we would never do anything to backstab each other. So I'm 34 now and I am currently working on um, implementing astrology to save the Om Salamander. Um, I've made a proposal to the organization about you know, how astrology might be able to do this and it's a very complex algorithm that I've created. 
and so I hope that I really do feel that this is going to become something big. It's just so strange, but who knew that by embracing my sort of inner freak that I'd be able to be of a huge help to the world. So after having gone through all of this, I realized the cycle that my, car uh, my karmic cycle that I've been going through. And it all started because of my insecurity about my ability to fit in and belong. Because of the fact that, you know, I kept having, when I was younger, I kept having to sort of strive to really fit in because of this pain that I had felt, you know, moving schools and then not fitting in and being alone you know, made me strive to really not feel that pain again by fitting in no matter what. So yeah, I overcompensated by superficially fitting in and then retreating to be alone from time to time. It was always this feeling of, you know, being in a crowd yet feeling alone versus being alone yet feeling a sense of belonging. And I was struggling going back and forth between these two things. I sort of unconsciously kept people at arm's length due to fear of vulnerability that being really close is going to bring the pains of the past back again and this sort of emotional disconnect makes it very easy for me to use others to get ahead with my goals in life without me even realizing it like you know when I was doing event planning um, the reason why I joined that was because I wanted to use that job use all the people and the workplace um, just to get climb the social ladder and gain more popularity and meet more influential people so well guess what they used me back in return because of that emotional disconnect you see when there's no heartfelt connection people just remain acquaintances and they just sort of feed off of each other through what the other can give, like sort of taking advantage of each other and that's the way the society is. And so this leads to me feeling betrayed, but it was my own karma all along. And then this leads to having more insecurity about my ability to fit in and belong. So I learned that in order for me to break this really, really lonely cycle, I had to learn to be alone and let my freak flag fly and be comfortable with that. I also had to use my understanding of group psychology to sort of envision the progress of consciousness and help with the progress of that social consciousness, that I needed to use these two things as a fuel for my hopes, my dreams, and my real goals in this life. So rather than just hoping to have my goals, you know, have, having my dreams come true, because that hope is eventually going to lead me to need to use other people from time to time, I've learned that I should be planting the seed of my goals, plant that myself plant the seeds for my dreams to grow even if my dreams seem a little bit out of reach I learned that from time to time I have to end unhealthy acquaintances and friendships otherwise the universe takes them away from me and I had to learn to form healthier friendships and acquaintances and that can be done when I let my freak flag out because that oddity, that eccentricity, when you can share that with somebody and have them accept that part of you, that is real love, that's real connection. Even if it is sharing this with others who I would originally deem very odd and very weird, but that's just my reflection in the mirror. And to look beyond that sort of image and to still bond with those people anyways, that is real connection.
that gets me in touch with the fact that everybody is odd in their own way, yet everybody is the same. We're all odd, but we're all trying to save the world. I, I realize that I can have group participation, I can be part of a group, I can fit in, but it has to be absolutely 100% authentic.